reading is taken from John chapter 7 verses 37 to 39. On the last and greatest day of the feast, Jesus stood and said in a loud voice, If anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, streams of living water will flow from within him. By this he meant the Spirit, whom those who believed in him were later to receive. Up to that time, the Spirit had not been given, since Jesus had not yet been glorified. Well, good morning, everyone. It's um, Pentecost. It's uh, Pentecost Sunday, the day the church traditionally uh, celebrates its birthday. It's coming into being as we remember the story in the beginning of Acts where the disciples will gather together uh, in a closed space in that room, in that upper room, and the Spirit came in tongues of fire and ignited their world and um, filled them and uh, propelled them out into the world to bring the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ to the world. Uh, Peter stood up and preached to a great crowd and thousands came to faith that day and were baptised and added to the church. Uh, one of the things I'm very thankful for is that uh, when I became Christian, I became a Christian uh, when I was um, 18, 19 years old at university and my first experience of faith was a Pentecostal church um, in the university uh, city that I went to and um, it was just a remarkable, a remarkable experience. So I uh, became a Christian at the Christian uh, Union University Christian Union and um, the people I immediately uh, connected with fellow uh, other students who were Christians it took me along to uh, a couple of uh, weeks later to my first church service I hadn't had a lot of uh, church experience uh, what I had had as a as a child as a teenager was quite limited and quite dry uh, in some respects um, and so we went along to this Pentecostal church and um, at the time it was meeting in a didn't have its own building it was meeting in a community center and I can uh, remember uh, one of the one of the things in the conversation as we uh, went our way made our way um, to this community center it was an evening um, 6 30 start because that's when church services are supposed to start uh, the conversation was about whether somebody w would or would not pray in tongues the gift of tongues and I remember going uh, along to this service and just that sense of expectancy and excitement of joy and of celebration of um, absolute delight to be there. Uh, the place was packed out, we had to have chairs um, out into the, the corridors um, to, to get everybody in. I mean it wasn't a big space, we're not talking about huge numbers of people but it was overflowing, it, it defied that kind of once you get to 80% capacity then people are going to stop coming well we'd gone way past that and still people were being added to the church and so we waited would somebody pray in tongues and, or not and of course uh, being a Pentecostal church somebody did pray in tongues and somebody interpreted it and and all the other things that you'd expect the joy of the worship um, the excitement uh, the, the dancing and so for my uh, formative Christian experience that was um, that was my in a sense my norm my my benchmark that services um, when Christians gathered were like this you would expect the spirit to come the spirit was very real um, of the possibilities of um, revelation of spiritual gifts of people praying uh, in tongues or words of knowledge um, revealing all kinds of stuff there was there was always this sense that the Holy Spirit at any point could intrude into the service and do something unexpected and spontaneous and um, and so that was that was how my uh, Christian life was formed I was then baptized in the Holy Spirit not long after I become a Christian about three months later after my own commitment and uh, prayed in tongues um, and just filled with joys still praying in tongues um, and it was a remarkable time and then baptised towards the end of that um, year. Um, I mean, over time, uh, that joy and excitement I continue to give thanks for and that expectation of, of the Holy Spirit's presence uh, with me is, uh, remains a, a source of encouragement and a delight. But I think over time I began, began to realise that some of what seemed to be spontaneity was, had become increasingly 
predictable. Um, the same kind of people would start the same songs and the same people would pray similar things in tongues. And um, there was just, a, in all that spontaneity, it, it, some parts of it became a little um, too predictable. Nothing wrong with that. Um, but uh, you wondered how creative uh, the spirit was being amongst his people. Um, and also, I think over time, it was very church centric, but more than that, it was very sort of service, uh, the church service centric. So by which I mean that the, the the presence of the spirit and the manifestation of the spirit was largely measured by what did or didn't happen in, in church services. So if lots of people uh, prayed in tongues, if they were singing in tongues, if um, people were prayed for after the service, those sorts of things, um, then the spirit had been with us. If there was less of those things then the spirit had been with us less or, or not at all um and again there's nothing wrong with those things and there's nothing wrong with space for for the spirit to speak paul makes it very clear um that spiritual gifts form a, a part of of the life of the church um but it became very not just church centric very sunday centered the, the measure of the spirit amongst us and in some ways it be, became very um for me, I guess over time it felt a little inwardly focused um, in some places. It was about us enjoying the blessing of the Spirit, us enjoying the presence of the Spirit, that sense of uh, being loved and cared for, uh, God being with us. Um, but you began to wonder what the Spirit was doing beyond the boundaries of the church, beyond the boundaries of, of Sunday morning, had the, the Spirit... Um, largely evacuated those places left those places and, and all, all of it was wholly focused in the church um in some ways i caricature and i know that's uh, in some places it wouldn't be a true um description of a, a lot of extraordinary things that, that go on but in the passage that we read today jesus kind of blows the doors and the windows off a, a very church focused and church-centered understanding of, of Pentecost and the spirit. Um, John in chapter 7 uh, locates this this story, this event in the Feast of Tabernacles. There were three great uh, Jewish feasts and this was the third one towards harvest time and there was a pilgrimage to Jerusalem uh, for the Feast of Tabernacles, the Feast of Booths, um, and it lasted eight, eight days. And during that time, pilgrims from all over Israel would come to Jerusalem. And during that time, they would live in booths, in tents, uh, in temporary accommodation, if you like. And um, and they would give thanks for God's goodness. There was there would have been a giving thanks for the harvest. There would have been a giving thanks for all of God's provision for them. And um, but most importantly, it was to remember. The 40 years in the wilderness when Israel, having been set free from uh, captivity in Egypt, slaves in Egypt, God had set them free. Um, and they began their journey to the promised land, to the land to their home, to the land of peace, a land flowing with milk and honey where they would be secure for ever and provided for. Um, but during this interim time, this what turned out to be 40 years, it didn't originally um, intend to be 40 years but it ended up being 40 years they they journeyed in in the wilderness and they lived in in tents in booths in uh, they tabernacled in temporary accommodation and what's really important is that their their existence was incredibly fragile they had no um, other source of uh, food and water apart from the land and what God brought <clears throat> to them from from the land water and food manna from heaven and water that gushed forth from from the earth they were entirely dependent on his provision whether or not he would keep them all the normal security um, that you and i might enjoy having even in these strange times still being able to get to the shops and uh, food um, and water available every time we turn the tap on for israel um, their experience was was completely different during this time and so once a year they gathered to remember a time when their life was at its most fragile and its most uncertain. They hadn't arrived yet, and yet God provided for them, and God kept them, uh, and God watched over them and looked after them. And there was there was harvest, and there, there was food, and there was water to drink. Um, and in fact, in one place, although it's not here, even their clothes seemed to last longer. Uh, 
than would have normally been the case. And right at the end of this feast, Jesus stands up and he says these extraordinary words. Remember, they've been celebrating, they've been feasting. It's a, it's a feast time, it's a festival time. It's singing and dancing. All the normal uh, patterns of life have been abandoned. I mean, if you ever look at any uh, music festival today, you'll, you can picture banners and colour and excitement and joy and uh, giving thanks for the good things of life. This isn't a time to lament. This is a time to celebrate and to um, delight in all that God is has done for them and then at the end of these these days of celebration in which they have given thanks to God for all uh, that he has provided for them Jesus says let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink and whoever believes in me the scripture has said rivers of living water will flow from within them and then John sets this into context he says by this he, being Jesus, meant the Spirit. So this water that would come from the source of Jesus. By this he meant the Spirit, whom those who believed in him were later to receive. So whatever they had received up until that point was not this promise, this not this uh, coming of the Spirit upon them. And Jesus sets his promise, the coming of the Spirit, whoever believes in me will never thirst in the context of, of the Feast of Tabernacles, in that time when life was at its most fragile, when all they had was God, that God alone was sufficient, that God alone was able to keep them through the desert experience. God was able to keep them safe while they journeyed to the promised land. God provided for them. And Jesus now wants to say to them, the God who provided for you in the wilderness is the one who stands before you. I am the one who will meet your thirst come to me and I will provide for you rivers of living water and you will drink from me and all of life all of your experience will be kept in the hands of God and you will be kept safe because the spirit has come upon you that on the day of Pentecost the whole of your life is caught up in the faithfulness and in the presence of God. This is the promise that no matter what happens to you, God is with you. God will provide for you each day. And so this isn't a promise just for Sundays and for services and in spontaneous acts of worship and the use of spiritual gifts and, and whatever part they uh, might play in our worship, important as those things are, that the day of Pentecost blows open the life of the church that it reminds us that we who have come to Jesus have been filled with living water and out of our very being, out of the life of the church, flows this living water, this sustaining water, this thirst quenching water that flows out into the world, that the world might see that there is a people who thirst for God and have found their satisfaction in Christ. And so we offer that to the world that in a sense is, if you like, uh, God's gift to the world through us. That the waters of life that flow through us by the spirit flow from us out into the world beyond the boundaries of the church, into the highways and the byways, into our neighbourhoods, into our networks of friends and relationships and all of those things. But at this point it had not yet been given because Jesus had not yet gone to the cross. He had not yet been glorified. He had not glorified. He had not yet been raised from the dead. He had not yet ascended to heaven. That the spirit that quenches our thirst, that the spirit who fills our life, that the spirit who propels us out into the world, content with God's faithfulness and God's provision for us, is the spirit that only makes sense in the light of the cross of Jesus Christ and the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and his ascension into the heavens and his eternal rule over all things. This is the spirit who fills our hearts, that baptizes us, that gave birth to the church all of those years ago and continues to give birth to new life. All around us, signs of the spirit meeting the thirsting of the people who we live amongst. 
us, I pray, that once again we would drink richly from the Holy Spirit, from this water that fills us, that in the midst of these strange times there would be a time of, of feasting, of festival, giving thanks for God's faithfulness, the one who has kept us and will keep us through these times. But the one who fills us to overflowing, there is more than enough to go around. That God is more than generous and he will not only bless us, but through us, he might just bless the world. So may God fill you once again with his dreams and with his visions. And may the voice of God be heard amongst us. And may the hope that we have found in Jesus Christ go out into the world as the Spirit again stirs our hearts and lights our lives with the fire of God's grace and God's goodness. May God keep you this Pentecost. Amen. Thank you.